Morning, everybody. We'll give a few minutes for um, Facebook to let everybody know that I'm on and that we're live. We're doing um, our make the cut video. Sorry we missed last week's, but we had AC issues and it was hotter than Hades in here. And I was working with the AC guy to get it fixed. And it's just been one of those weeks. Lots of fun. Well, I know I showed you my Hoop Sisters mystery quilt blocks with color. And I didn't get much farther than that because I decided to change my colors to white and cream and pearl. See? What do you think? I know it doesn't look like much, but I love it. And something different that I did that Hoop Sisters is not doing currently is I quilted right through to the back. So instead of connecting my blocks on the front and having one back piece and just stitched in a ditch, I am going to quilt, they're all quilted, and I'm going to connect the blocks with sashing on the back, which is just something that I like to do. I think it's adorable. I love it. More than adorable. I think they're beautiful. It's been crazy in here. Really crazy. I'm getting ready for quilters track. So I've been working on rows like crazy. Trying to do this. At one point yesterday, I had this embroidery machine going on some Kimberbell event stuff. I had the big multi needle working on the embroidery machine, working on Hoop Sisters. I had the scanning cut working on pieces for the kits for Quilters Track. Plus, I was cutting fabric pre cuts in the back for Quilters Track kit. So it, it's been kind of crazy to say the least. All right, let's go. Okay, so today we are working on block 37 and 38. And I've already started doing some work on those blocks so that it can make this go a little bit faster. So here is block 37. It's gonna be three flying geese and just these small squares and rectangles put together in strips. As you can see, you always start on one side. Basically, a fly, this is the more traditional way of doing a flying geese, which is a square that's a little bit more than half the size of your rectangle with a line diagonally on the back. And you're gonna stitch on that line. I traditionally have start on the same side of the flying geese every time. Um, is it a big deal? No, but in, the big scheme of things, if you start on this side, the fold here on the top will be different. And it can and possibly will be noticeable when you're looking at the overall quilt. So all I'm gonna do is stitch on that design. More than likely in the grand scheme of things, it would be fine in most cases, but I have found that if I do it the same way every single time, I'm less likely to have an issue or to get aggravated. So there we are stitched on it. And all I'm gonna do is iron this up and then I'll be right back and we'll cut the bulk off. You always wanna iron them first before you even think about doing the second part, other side. Because if not, you can't get the fabric folded up correctly. There you go. And all I'm going to do now is just lightly take the fold piece up, hold it onto it, and I'm just going to cut approximately a quarter of an inch on this side of the stitch line to get rid of the bulk. Now, we do the same thing with this side. And for me and my machine, starting at the point and come down 
is easier for my machine. It doesn't want to suck the fabric into the faceplate. There you go. Now I'm going to just iron this one up and then cut the bulk. How's everybody doing? It's been a little crazy. I'm looking forward to, I got a new license plate coming for Quilter's Trek with an astronaut. And I've only seen some quick um, prints just to approve it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's going to look like when it comes back. And it comes in. There you go. So now we're going to have all of the prairie points pointing that way. I'm just going to sew these together and then we can sew the top and the bottom on and this block is done. So I put the cream on top. I know I'm going to sew on that side, but if you turn it over so that you can see the point that you just made in this prairie point and do not stitch beyond with the thread um, where the X is. So you'd want to stay on this side of the, on this side of that X, not on this side. If you do that, you will not cut off your point and you will always have your point in your flying geese. And I'm careful to bring my foot up when I need to, to make sure my seams stay nice and flat. There you go. I didn't cut off the point. Now I'm going to do it on this side. Just holding it. Come on. Once in a while, just doesn't want to grab the fabric. Oh, and I have a fly. Let me tell you. I've been working on the roof, and I think they opened something up because once in a while we get a fly in here, and they just don't want to go away. I think my grandbaby's listening to me on Facebook. I just got to sew that a little bit closer. My daughter sent me a picture of Aurora with her headphones on this morning. All right, there we go. I'm just going to iron it. I don't think you guys can hear it, but they're working on their, they have their radio on pretty loud. That's all I hear now is music from on the roof. That's why this month has been so difficult with them working on it. hard to do anything and not hear banging or anything else. So now all we're going to do is so these two rows on and this block is done. And I am going to align just a couple of small seams. Not that it's super, super important or you're gonna see it at this point, but this quilt is a great one to 
improve your skills and, and your sewing. So if you have the chance, learn to line up your seams, even though there are a couple of the seams that really don't matter too much, take it. One more, and then we'll go on to the next block. We've got so much going on around here. We've got astronaut fabric coming in today with the shuttle. It's a fabric that I've had in here before and it sells out very quickly. Um, I got my new dies for doing one block wonder kits. And I can't, that came in yesterday. I can't wait to try that out. But I have a few things I gotta get done first. Super excited about that. Basically, I will cut six layers of fabric at a time, and each cut makes one one block wonder block. There'll be enough equilateral of triangles to make a single block. I'm super excited about that. I think it's going to be wicked cool. I'm actually thinking about having a class to teach One Block Wonder where you purchase the kit and you don't even have to do any of the cutting. How much fun would that be? Here we go. All I have to do is iron it and that block is done. Okay. All right, we'll go on to the next one. is our next block again with flying geese but i've already done the flying geese because i've already showed you a couple times in here so i figure that makes it nice and easy all i'm going to do is sew these two two rectangles to either either side of the flying geese first and then we're going to just sew the rows together very simple Oops, there it came up. Do this a little bit, Daisy, a little bit of chain stitching. So for both sides at the same time. In what, two weeks? Roughly, we have our next Kimberbell event, which is um, Star Spangle Celebration. Super fun. It's a one day event. Okay. No, now we're just going to do this next side.
We're going to iron these and then we'll be ready to put this row together, this block together. And just going to put a couple of more straight seams and we'll be done. And this one, we're going to iron a different way, just so that I can line up my seam. Okay, go. So, actually, we don't even have any seams to line up. That's cool. So, we're just going to sew our rows. Again, I'm making sure that I'm not going to stitch over that X so that I do not cut off my points on the frame. Because I use a scant quarter of an inch seam, I have to cut up to square all my blocks off just to get them down to the correct size that I need, which I love. Um, I'd rather have a little bit too much, and we're not talking about a lot. We're talking like, you know, an eighth, maybe an eighth of an inch that I have to trim up here and there, which is not a big deal. But what it does is it guarantees that I'm going to have the size block that I need. One more seam and this block is done. And again, I'm making sure that I'm not gonna stitch over my X. You know, X is the spot. That way, it doesn't get cut off. Nothing worse than going through all this work and then cutting off the point at the end. There we go. And two intact points. Here is block 37. And block 38 with our intact points on both blocks. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments for this week's blocks, let me know, post your comment and I will answer you. Other than that, I got a lot of work to do, getting ready for a quilter's track and a bunch of other stuff. Got a lot going on. I've got more fabric coming in um, from Robert Kaufman sometime this week, I think, or next. I think it starts Friday. We'll have an order. There's three small orders for, I think, one Friday and two Monday, or two Friday and one Monday, whatever. Um, and the quilt kit crystal, um, the crystal something, I forget what it's called. Quilt kit is gonna be in one of those boxes. I'll let you know as soon as it comes in, along with some Pokemon and some really pretty metallics, which is just going to be the first bolt that I have coming in on that line. It's called Moonlight. I want to say Moonlight Garden, but not positive. It's been, like I said, crazy, crazy, crazy week. And it's only Wednesday. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.